Spoiler alert, this is a very tired Glenn from the future here to tell you, don't try this at home. Edenvale Airport. Automated weather observation. One, two, Welcome friends, four, welcome back nine, to the hangar. Today one, is the day I'm gonna start off, stripping the paint two, two, off of Mike Victor two, uniform. Two, two, um, <laughs> two, niner, niner, I'm not sure when this paint was put on. Uh, probably in the late 90s when the wing skins were redone. It is mostly peeling off on its own at this point. And from what I can tell across most of the aircraft, there is only one coat of paint, but I can't be sure. I don't know exactly, but it is peeling off. It's got to go. And my idea, my dream, um, what I want is a polished aluminum aircraft. I want a polished aluminum aircraft with some sort of maybe stripe down the side, make it look really retro, make it look 1960. Even though by 1960, Cessna had stopped painting this aircraft that way. And a lot of people have warned me off of that. They've said, don't do it. Glenn, don't do it. It's a pain in the arse. It takes a lot of work. Um, you have to dedicate weekend after weekend after weekend to keep it polished and looking great. And other people have warned me off by saying, you don't know what's under this paint. And I don't. Um, I do know that whoever painted it last did a very poor job. They didn't bond it very well. But the aluminum underneath could be scratched. They could have used a Scotch-Brite or a very fine, fine sandpaper to scratch up the surface before painting. I don't think they have the way that it's peeling off. There could be more than one coat of paint in certain parts of this aircraft. Um, but the way that it's peeling off, I don't think so. But in the end, I'm not gonna know until I peel it off. I may get all this paint off and realize that I need to repaint the whole, the whole plane, in which case I will take it to somebody to do the repainting job. But in any event, it all starts with stripping the paint off. And I went out and got quotes for stripping it, the paint um, and they were quite expensive. And I thought, you know, I can dedicate four days of my time, set that aside out of my schedule, to strip this off. And so for the cost of the stripper and my time, I can make it happen, I think. Um, you'll find out at the end of the video how well I do. So today, the first part of the video is all about prepping the aircraft. I need to cover all of the windows with aluminum foil. I need to cover all of the plastic parts with aluminum tape and aluminum foil because aluminum doesn't react, but the uh, the stripper will eat through the plastic. So the landing light lens, all of these things, I need to tape them and cover them in aluminum foil. And then we'll move on to the stripper. Okay, so this is day two of stripping the airplane. Day one was just the setup, the prep, putting the aluminum foil over all of the windows. All of the plastic pieces were covered with aluminum foil. The uh, prop was covered with aluminum foil, bags over the wheels, any plastic part that I couldn't take off the plane, taped with aluminum tape and covered with aluminum foil. And the parts that I could, um, I took those off the plane and set them aside. The paint stripper will eat through plastic, it will eat through rubber. Anything that was plastic or rubber had to be covered or taken off. I put down six mil poly on the floor to catch the drippings um, so that I can roll it up and dispose of it appropriately. Hazardous waste. Now, about three weeks ago, I was here in the hangar and I did some test patches to try out different strippers to see which one would work. Um, the first one I tried was this from Stewart Systems. It's called EcoStrip. It is eco-friendly, water-based, uh, doesn't have a smell, isn't toxic, doesn't burn your skin, blah, 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 blah. And it sort of worked. I'll show you the test patch on the other side of the aircraft. Sort of worked, but it wasn't great. Um, so that's out. I tried this PTI certified Sure Strip. Um, that's this patch here, and it worked really well. Now there are other products out there available to you if you are stripping an airplane. What you have to realize is this is August, 2021. COVID is a thing and COVID is changing the way that um, products are shipped and what's available to me. And there were several products that I could get, but not until late October. Um, they were delayed in production, delayed in delivery, all of those things. 
couldn't get them here until late October. And by late October here in Canada, in an unheated uh, hangar, I wasn't going to be able to do this. Um, the temperature range for those strippers to work, the temperature here would already be well below that. And I didn't want to risk a product that may be a great product, but wouldn't work in my temperature range. So I'm going to go with this PTI Sure Strip. Now, um, this stuff will burn your skin if you get a little bit on it. I used it inside the cabin to take off all of the tar and the pitch and the glue. If you get it on your skin, it will burn. So I'm going to be wearing a Tyvek suit. I'm also going to be wearing a respirator because way down in the MSDS or the, um, the data sheets where they talk about health and safety, there are a number of chemicals that they say are bad for your lungs if you're around it all day. So I'm going to be wearing a mask. I'm also going to be putting it on with a brush out of a bucket. Um, most of the videos you see online are people spraying it on. I just don't have that luxury of a sprayer and I didn't want to go to the expense of, of buying a sprayer and I couldn't rent one. So it's time to suit up and start painting this on and see if we can get this stripped. So I'm about an hour into actually putting the paint stripper on the aircraft. And I've learned a whole bunch already. There were things that I knew, but I guess I didn't think that they were as important as they really are. So I'm learning a lot of this on my own, piecing together little bits here and there. You see all of these timeless videos where they spray it on the aircraft, they walk away for four hours and they come back and then they just hose it off. Um, that's not what ha what's happening here. What I've learned is this stuff dries or this, this particular uh, product dries a lot quicker than they say it does. They do tell you to wrap it in plastic. I'm here on my own and wrapping this wing in plastic so that, uh, so that the, the stripper doesn't dry um, has proven to be too difficult, but it is something I'm going to keep trying to see if I can find a technique. So in lieu of being able to do that, I'm going to have to deal with a much, much smaller section of the wing at a time and scrape it off before it dries. Um, also applying it, they tell you to apply it thick. They're not joking. You got to apply it thick. Um, I put it on with a brush and at the end of the brush stroke, sometimes there's not enough on the brush to really coat it, but it looks coated and you can kind of see in here the spots where the brush didn't have enough on it and it just did not cut through. And in other places, it's just not cutting through the undercoat, which means I'm going to have to do a second coat, which is fine. I figured I'd have to do probably two or three coats anyway. So I'm going to strip off this bunny suit outside off camera and I'm going to cool off a little bit because about an hour in a bunny suit in, uh, in 30 degree weather here in Edenvale is a little bit too much. And then I'll get back at it. So the things you learn when you're stripping your airplane. As I'm stripping the empennage, um, it's come to my attention that the Charlie Foxtrot Mike Victor uniform registration was right here painted on the empennage but underneath that paint you can just see faintly Fox something it might be November or Hotel Romeo Golf so this empennage or tail section is from another plane and I have to imagine that when this plane went back into service in 1998 when they did the wing work they've substituted an empennage from another aircraft um, I'm going to have to look this up and see when aircraft with this similar um, marking went out of service and what happened to them. <sighs> so much stripping left to do. I better get back to it. I have spent two days spreading the PTI sure strip on this aircraft and it hasn't done a very good job. In some places it has worked out really well, but in other places it's having a terrible time trying to get this reddish brown primer coat off. And I made a bunch of phone calls. Um, no one can say for sure exactly what that reddish brown primer coat is, but a lot of people have said that it's probably an automotive coating. It's probably an automotive primer that has a filler in it, almost like Bondo. And it's, it's proving very difficult to get off. So I stopped, wasn't working. Time to make a new plan. So I got on the phone and I talked to Scott at WeberTech and they make this product here. It's called Sunset Strip. And Scott said, you know, I'm cautiously optimistic that it's gonna do what you need it to do. Spray it on, 
take a soft bristle nylon brush and scrub it a little bit just to make sure that it gets right into that red layer and then power wash it off. So that's what I'm going to do. I bought this, uh, this Graco sprayer. We're going to spray it on. We're going to see what happens. But something else that I found out is that on this tail, there's a different registration mark again. So I found one registration mark on the other side and a different registration mark on this side. This one is Charlie Fox Oscar Sierra Romeo. Now the registration mark on the other side, I looked it up, that plane has been struck off. It no longer exists. Uh, sometime in the mid 80s, it was demolished, which is how that tail probably end up on Oscar Sierra Romeo. But how did it end up on this aircraft? I don't know. Oscar Sierra Romeo is still out there flying. So if you own that aircraft, get in touch with me. I'd love to know how your tail ended up on this airplane. So while I'm working on that mystery, I'm also going to be spraying this plane. So I'm going to get the, uh, the sprayer set up. We're going to spray it on and we're going to rinse it off and we're going to see what happens. Fingers crossed. Not too shabby, huh? Looks pretty good. So let me get it back into the hangar and then we'll talk about it. So it came out not too shabby. At this point, it looks pretty good. Just don't look too closely. I know that um, for years to come, I will be going around on the rivets and the seams and scraping out a little bit of that red oxide primer. And that red oxide primer was horrible to get off. None of the products that I used uh, would cut through it to the point where it would just slough off or I could rinse it off with a power washer. Nothing worked. So I tried three different products and you know what? All three of the products that I used took the paint off no problem. Um, <laughs> there was absolutely no problem getting the paint off. It was that primer. So what it came down to was just putting on a little bit of the sunset strip at a time, coming back after an hour and then rubbing it with a brush to try to loosen it off and then power washing it off. And at this point, it's down to a little bit of lacquer thinner with a rag, spray on the lacquer thinner, rub it off with a rag. And I think that will get most of it. But I know that for years to come, I'm going to find little spots where there's still some red oxide primer. And I have to take off all of the control surfaces 
in order to get at that. And that's something that I will pick at and pick at and pick at and pick at. I'm in no rush to get that done now because most of the plane is clean um, and I can start polishing it and see how the polishing works. There's a couple of spots where I won't be able to polish. I know that um, at some point, at some point in the 61 years that this plane has been in service, um, it's been painted multiple times. I did find spots where there was more than one coat of paint. One of the flaps on the other side had five coats of paint. Um, and some of the coats of paint had primer in between the coats. So they just primed over the old coats. Some of the parts on this plane are from other planes. The cowling, the tail, the baggage door, all from different planes. And so they had different colors of paint on them too. So at some point during those paintings, someone's gone at some of the panels with a little bit of sandpaper. And I don't think I'm gonna be able to buff that out. So I'm starting to look at patterns of either painting it or putting on vinyl, short term, putting on vinyl, um, that will cover those spots so that it looks good anyway. Now, all of the parts are here to continue to get this plane in the air. Everything has finally come in, so it's just a matter of meeting up with Chris at his shop and putting those parts on. So we're ticking right along with this plane. Um, I should be flying it in no time, I think. Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon.